the south rim of the Grand Canyon is so grand that no one viewpoint can do it justice. So today we're going to show you how to easily get to the most accessible among them. 21, to be exact. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Well, we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. This is part of our America's Grandest Canyons Road Trip series, where we traveled cross country to explore the Grand Canyon, Bryce Canyon, Glen Canyon, Palo Duro Canyon, and more. Stay tuned for more videos in our evolving trip playlist. What's great about these viewpoints is you don't need to go down the canyon like this one to see them. That means they're great for those who want to take in the jaw-dropping views without as much work. Most are wheelchair and stroller accessible, and for those viewpoints you do drive to, dogs are allowed on a leash. Zeus is going to be very happy. Some require use of the park's free shuttle buses since there are no vehicles allowed on the access roads. And one route you must drive if you want to see the viewpoints. For the first set of viewpoints, you will need to take the shuttle bus along the red route to Hermit's Rest. Unlike the other viewpoints we'll show you in this video, these are only available from March 1st to November 30th. Before getting on the shuttle, the first viewpoint you can check out is actually at the trailhead for Bright Angel, near the Bright Angel Lodge. This is a very popular hike in the park, and from here you'll get a somewhat good view of the canyon. Stay tuned next week for our video on our hike down that trail. Once you get on the shuttle bus, your first official stop is the Trail View Overlook. This viewpoint gives a much more expansive view of the canyon, where you can see Indian Garden and Plateau Point as well as a multitude of switchbacks for those hiking down Bright Angel. You will also see where you just came from, as the Bright Angel Lodge and cabins are visible in the distance. Maricopa Point is named after the Maricopa Indians who lived in South Central Arizona. For this one, you will need to take a short path to the point, which gives a nice panoramic view of the canyon. And if your eyes are sharp, you'll spot the first view of the Colorado along the Hermit's Rest Route. On your right, you can see how the canyon forms a narrow promontory. In the center of your view is Dana Butte. To your left, you will see your next stop, Powell Point. The next viewpoint is named after geologist and explorer John Wesley Powell, who made the first official U.S. government-sponsored passage of the Grand Canyon in 1869 on an arduous three-month rafting expedition, amazingly done with only one arm. Before you reach the viewpoint, you will take a short walk up to a memorial for Powell and his fellow explorers. Another piece of history, the ceremony to designate the Grand Canyon as a national park took place at this viewpoint. On the other side of the memorial is the lookout point, which gives really wide views of the canyon. Our next viewpoint is Hopi Point. Hopi was so close to Powell, we decided to walk rather than wait for the bus. The 13 mile Grand Canyon Rim Trail links together most of these viewpoints on the Hermit's Rest Route and runs along the rim of the canyon. While not every set of viewpoints is a quarter mile apart like these two, the trail makes a great way to stretch your legs and see the sights between bus stops. When you get to Hopi, you'll be treated to several mesas in the distance, such as the Horus, Isis, and Osiris temples. You will also get to see the mighty Colorado River in several spots. Hopi Point is a popular viewpoint at both sunrise and sunset, and is your first glimpse of the western part of the Grand Canyon, since it's the most northern part of the South Rim. It was definitely one of our favorite viewpoints. At Mojave Point, another popular viewpoint for sunsets, you will get some additional views of the Colorado River. 
This viewpoint is wide with a few mini overlooks and gives you a nice opportunity to see the red sandstone formation below, called the alligator, as well as some different angles of the previously mentioned temple maces. Hey boo boo, let's get us a picnic basket! You also get a side view of the vertical cliffs of the next stop, the Abyss. The Abyss is exactly as it sounds, a 3,000 foot drop from where you're standing to the Tonto Plateau below. What's amazing is that it does not seem so deep, which really plays into the whole you can't trust your eyes feeling when seeing something so grand and so vast. Lined by jagged vertical cliffs, You'll get a different view of the more distant Colorado River as well. What's interesting about this viewpoint is that you are not on a peninsula like the other viewpoints, and there aren't really any rails. <laughs> uh, oh. While a very small viewpoint, Monument Creek is still worth checking out. You won't get the same expansive views as some of the other points, but you'll still be able to see Monument Creek heading into the Colorado River below. Our next viewpoint is Pima Point, possibly the best viewpoint on this route in our opinion. From here, the views are both deep and wide with a clear shot of 94 Mile Creek and the Temple Buttes going as far as 40 miles in the distance. Hermit Creek is also below, and while it was too busy for us, people told us when it is quiet, you can hear the Colorado River. Our last stop on this route is Hermit's Rest and the location of the Hermit Trailhead. There are restrooms, a cafe with food and refreshments, drink machines, and some more views of this beautiful thing called the Grand Canyon. Afterwards, you'll take the shuttle back. Our next set of viewpoints will be on the shuttle bus again along the Kaibab Trail, or Orange Route. Starting with the farthest point, you'll head to Yaki Point, one of the most popular viewpoints in the Grand Canyon. From here, you'll be able to see the South Kaibab Trail slightly below to your west, especially the Cedar Ridge and O'Neill Butte. You can also see Newton Butte to your east. There are plenty of places to sit and check out the view as well without any railing, if that's your thing. The next spot is the South Kaibab Trailhead, where you will see Pipe Creek below and Yaki Point on the eastern ridge. We hiked South Kaibab on a previous day, and it was epic. We'll link that above. As with Bright Angel or the other trailheads you can visit, feel free to head down a little if you'd like for different views or to get away from the crowds. Unlike regular trailheads that only have a single scenic destination miles away, every footstep you take down into the Grand Canyon will leave you speechless. Even going down a few hundred feet on these trails can really take your breath away. The next spot is the Pipe Creek Vista, a small vista between Mather and Yaki Point. While not expansive, this is still an amazing view. I mean, what view here isn't? It offers plenty of places to sit near the edge as well. You'll get to see some nice evergreens below you and some temples in the distance. You can drive here since it's the first stop on the Desert View Road, but it's a bad idea since there's almost no parking. The stop on this shuttle section is by far the most popular and accessible, primarily because it's a short walk from the visitor center with several large parking lots. Mather Point was named after Stephen Mather, who helped found the National Park Service, became its first director, and was the Grand Canyon's first superintendent as well. 
The view at a little over 7,000 feet gives you roughly a quarter view of the entire Grand Canyon. Because of these expansive views, Mather is an extremely popular spot to watch at both sunrise and sunset, so make sure to come early. At Mather, you'll be able to see Cedar Ridge and the O'Neill Butte that you saw earlier, but this time from the east. Additionally, there are two overlooks in this viewpoint area as well. The next set of viewpoints are accessible by car only with no shuttle bus service. With the exception of the previously mentioned Pipe Creek Vista, when we went in September, there are usually plenty of parking at each of these viewpoints. The first place we stopped on this route was Grand Viewpoint, and because we drove, we got to take Zeus, since you can't take pets on the shuttle with you. From here, you will indeed get a grand view, if not one of the grandest, with views of many prominent buttes, such as the Rama, Vishnu, Shiva, and Krishnu temples, as well as a nice view of the Grapevine Creek in front of you. The Colorado River is off in the distance to your east, but it is very, very far away. In fact, this is the farthest point along the rim from the river. Our next viewpoint, Moran Point, is named after 19th century painter Thomas Moran, known for capturing the splendor and enormity of the American West landscapes, including the Grand Canyon. A painting of Moran's is hung at the White House, and he is credited with helping make Yellowstone a national park by presenting its raw beauty to Congress through his paintings. This viewpoint is south of Cape Royal on the North Rim and is known for its various multicolored rocks. In fact, here's a great example to see how the Paleozoic rocks are layered like you've been seeing in the information signs to show you the canyon's enormous depth and age. Below you is Red Canyon as well. Moran is probably our favorite viewpoint on this route. Moving on to La Ponte Point, this is a great viewpoint to see different places in the canyon, such as the 70 mile creek below, the Penal Point cliffs to the west, or the Vishnu Temple Butte in the distance. At Navajo Point, a place well known for great sunsets, you'll be able to get a little more up close and personal with the Colorado, and maybe even see rafts. In addition to the Escalante and Cardenas Buttes, you'll be able to see the last viewpoint in the distance, the Desert Tower. The Desert View Watchtower was opened in 1933 as a replica of an old Indian tower and is the easternmost point on the South Rim. It was designed by architect Mary Coulter. At 70 feet high, it's the highest point on the South Rim, which is cheating if you ask us. From the parking lot, it's roughly a quarter mile to the Lookout Tower, which, funny enough, when we went, was closed for looking out. Thankfully, you can still take in the views from the outside, where you will get a great view of what's called the Painted Desert. This viewpoint is a great stopping or starting point if you're coming from the east entrance of the park, since it has restrooms, a convenience store for pre-made sandwiches and drinks, and a trading post and gift shop. Lastly, we're going to take you to our final two viewpoints, both located not far from each other near Bright Angel Lodge. The first, the Kolb Studio, is right next to the Bright Angel Trail that we showed you earlier and has nice views of the canyon, both inside and outside. What's notable about this viewpoint is that there is also an art studio inside where you can check out art of the Grand Canyon. Pretty cool. Just a short walk away is Mary Coulter's Lookout Studio. The studio itself is a stone structure with a gift shop inside but there are two lookout points on each floor to see the canyon. 
you can get a direct view of the Indian Garden and Plateau Point below, which we'll show you in our next video, where we hike Bright Angel down into the canyon. We hope you enjoyed these viewpoints and this video helped you figure out where to go. What were your favorites and which ones have you been to? Check us out on the www or drop us a comment here if you like. Stay tuned for our hike down Bright Angel Trail in our next video and we'll see you on the trails or in the water.